I like the Wolverine, so this is a great thing. A little system, a box and go. You could put this in back of your TV, and then pretty much you could do plot by anybody. And if you want, you could set up a secondary controller. Xbox, very compatible, easy. Xbox controllers compatible. All right, today we're going to bring a Raspberry Pi 4. We're going to take a look at the kit and see what's included. So let's go ahead and take a look at it and see what you get. So out of the box, they gave you the manual, all right? That's very important because there's a lot of things that you need to be aware of how to connect fans and other connections, all right? So if you're not familiar with it, this is a perfect kit to start, all right? So let's open it up completely and see what you get. Now, I like that they include a case here, a Raspberry Pi case, if you guys can see that. Uh, it has plenty of entries. We're gonna open it up. We're gonna also set it up too. So let's put that aside. Then of course, they give you the Raspberry in a box, well protected for shipping, all right? All right, if you guys can see it, it comes with uh, actually a, a memory card, a micro SD card, 32 gigs, all right? Um, this is a, it's gonna be an eight gig um, Raspberry Pi that we're gonna use. Along, it included with the SD card reader, so it's an adapter, right? If you don't have a, a micro SD card adapter or reader, then you can always use a, the, the sand disk one all right so we're gonna put these on the side we're gonna put this here all right additional you get thermals all right you get a uh, thermal radiators little small ones that go into actually the chips itself all right they give you a, a nest uh, fan because if you want to overclock this you can do that overclock it by putting the fan in there just make sure you follow the instructions of where to plug it in uh, these are have a thermal tape so and it's a sticker a double side adhesive that goes onto the every chip now they do give you a power included with it and this is going to be a type c and it's a higher voltage right it's not a five volts right and it's an off and on power here for the raspberry pi hdmi so you can connect or right, your your regular monitor but not only one they give you two included with it so you'll be able to connect dual monitors and, and then use this as a personal machine or maybe a gaming machine so we're going to take a look at that i like this other feature that they included usb uh, this is a micro sd to us to regular usb in on the side of it ethernet cat 5 if you guys can connection all right category 5 connection um you have two usbs 3.0s and regular usbs type a's in additional on the other side you get a, a audio if you want to include extra speakers or audio and then here you actually get your connections in here for the actual monitors right and from here is a type c for the power connection and that's pretty much what you get so let's go ahead and um connect these all right let's start with the most important thing putting all those stickers well, if you guys see all the thermal tape all right which is actually the radiators uh to the actual system so So we cover all of them and you can adjust them how you please, right? So we pretty much set them up all of them, all right? So put in the four screws. When you line it up, it snaps in. All right, we got it all set up. All four screws are set. Now let's set up the fan. And to set up the fan is very simple. Just make sure that it's on the top of the cover because this is going to be part of the actual external part. One lock, two lock, and three lock. Now. We got everything locked in place. You see the SD card goes in here. We're gonna save that to the end because we're gonna program it too. You can always take this apart too. Now this is loose, so we're gonna put this facing down like this. Like the, where the, we're gonna right put it right over here, but you're gonna have to adjust it where the cable is not in the way. All right, so it's gonna cool every component in there. And if you're not getting enough heat, you can always turn it the other way. So either or. So and there's plenty of ventilation on the top and then the side when they go program the SD card. All right, so we done, we're gonna download the application for our Raspberry Pi here. So you can go here and uh, uh, you could find the description anywhere pretty much if you just Google Raspberry OS, Raspberry Pi OS, you'll get this link automatically. So we're gonna go ahead and download for Windows here. So we're gonna go down the device and we say Windows, but they have other applications too. And we already have our SD card in our computer too. So we're gonna download the application. Once you download it, you install it, and then you ask what kind of OS. All right, so we're gonna choose our OS, um, what type of OS. Um, we're gonna get a 
a Raspberry Pi OS. Let's change it to uh, 32 from 32. You say the full 32 bit, right? So we're gonna install. Um, we could have other access with it too. So, so let's go ahead and write it. And are you sure you want to do this? Yes. That's pretty much what we got to do. We wait and we install the application. All right. So we got both screens working. We got system update. So we're gonna hit OK. And this is gonna ask us to restart. So let's go ahead and restart the system because they just did an update of all the systems. So right now, just be patient and you do have to log in with your same password, username and password. All right, let's check a look at the Raspberry Pi, if you guys can see. So right now, we have a, co a couple applications. We got a couple of things running in here, but not that much. You got your bookmarks and everything else, pretty much, because this is Linux. If you're not familiar with it, um, there's a lot of um, tutorials online that you can do. So let's go to YouTube. All right, let's take a look at the uh, system itself. So we're in a YouTube, we're gonna watch a video. I'm gonna take out the audio because it's, if you have HDMI and you have speakers in your in your uh, monitor, it will play them through there. So if you notice, I'm gonna play a couple minutes, a couple seconds, all right? And this is a 4K video that we're looking at. We're gonna stop them, we're gonna pause it and then play it again. And I'm gonna make a full screen so you guys can see it full screen. And there's a little tiny, little tiny lag on this, but it, it, it kicks in and all you got to do is wait for a bit. And of course, right now we need to increase the speeds on it because I'm uh, I'm connected through a wireless device. Here's what we're currently running on. 35% uh, is being taken by the actual application, but you can always do different multitask. You could have this in your TV, you can install one of my favorite things that I like to install is a, a gaming system on there. I'm gonna show you a couple of things that you can do here. All right, let's take a look at another thing we can do with the Pi, all right? So I formatted another one here that I have for my retro gaming, and I was able to install a whole system, and I got a PlayStation controller here, and I'm able to play pretty much any game I want that you wanna play on your on your system so we're going to play it directly on the pi because you see i know i have a lot of cables but it's because you can see the both strings are connected but only one is the actual functional but what you can do is do marquees if you have a secondary screen you can do that but today we're just going to play with one and show you guys that i pre-programmed the actual controller so i'm playing with the retro pi if you guys can see the fans running and it's running really cool it's quiet very quiet and if you want to error exit the games, you can always reset it by hitting the dual buttons. But that's on your own convenience. It has plenty of games you can install. You can play old classics that you have. A lot of retro gaming. So retro arcade installed into the Raspberry Pi. It's running really smooth. If you're going to build yourself an arcade system. Or maybe just have it in your TV as a, uh, as a console. You can do that. So very convenient. I took, I, I'm going to take out the mirror. I don't need this because once you set it up. You don't pretty much any. And if you guys notice, I made some changes um, <clears throat> automatically. And you can see on my secondary screen. Drivers and everything. Images. You're going to have to get your own image as is. Um, so out of the box, it's not ready. you got to install certain things. But this kit's a great starter kit. So very simple, easy to use. I hope you guys enjoy the video.